right, well, welcome to uh, iFly AOA. We're here with a customer, Ali, who's interested in uh, AOA systems today. Yeah. So, Ali, what do you fly? I have a carbon cub, um, and I fly a lot at slow speed, so I think this might help me, but I'm not sure why, so I, I want to hear an explanation. Okay. Well, the best thing that the AOA system can do for you with iFly AOA, you're going to have a separate uh, indicator or a separate uh, probe on your wing. You'll have an indicator on your glare shield. And it's very similar to what we used in the F-16 community. I, I flew uh, the F-16 for the Air Force, wow. and uh, we have AOA systems in the F-16 to help keep us safe. Uh -huh. What I think this can do for you is help keep you safe in your carbon cub, um, and what it allows you to do is see the AOA of your airplane. With a simple display on your glare shield, you'll be able to see the, the, the okay. AOA, how, it, um, how the wind is hitting your wing, uh -huh. and how, what kind of lift is being generated. What exactly is AOA? You have. AOA is essentially it is angle of attack. And what it has to do is with the, the relative wind hitting the wing of the aircraft. Mm -hmm. Every aircraft has a critical angle of attack, and as that wind hits it, you can generate lift until a point where the wing stalls. So, but if I'm doing enough speed, couldn't I do any angle? You can if you're doing too much speed, but uh, sometimes for landing or for safety, you want to have an optimum angle of attack. So behind, the, when I'm behind the power curve, this could be really useful. That's exactly right. Really useful, or for you landing in the back country, yeah. landing out in a rough terrain, uh -huh. you want to be able to land at that optimum angle of attack where your wings are producing the right amount of lift, but at the right amount of airspeed that allow you to land safely in a back country environment. And, it, and is it customizable to any aircraft or, or it, oh, it's always the same, it doesn't matter? Like what I mean is uh, different aircraft have different stall speeds. And right, it is, it, is, uh, it is customizable to every aircraft. Okay. Once you install that blade on your wing, that little sensor, uh -huh. uh, you will have to calibrate it to your particular wing. And every airplane obviously has a different wing. Sure. And once you get it calibrated, the AOA display that's up on your glare shield is going to show you exactly how your wing is performing. And so that's what, really what the AOA system does the best. It gives the pilot the, the information of exactly what their wing is doing at any given second. So that's what's awesome. the most dangerous part of, uh, of most flying? Why, why are so many pilots killed? The most dangerous part, uh, according to the NTSB and the FAA, um, is in the final turn stall spin type accidents where pilots are getting slow based to final, based to final turns. It's the number one killer of, of pilots today. Wow. And um, it, you, you need more than just airspeed indicator or a stall indicator to keep you safe. That's something that the AOA system can do for you. It, can, it works at every weight. It works at every density altitude. It works at every temperature. So how, how does it show me the information? So base to final, I'm focused on the runway and maybe the airspeed. Uh -huh. Do I have to now look at a third instrument or how does it work? You do. You actually look at a different instrument, but it's up on your glare shield, importantly, right in your line of sight. So you're looking outside okay. so the airplane. I'm not looking away. That's it's right. right in that's sight. right. It's okay. in your field of view. That's the most important thing. And that's how we have it set up in the F-16. Nice. We have it in the glare shield right up in front in your line of vision. Nice. So when you're landing or in a final turn or in some sort of important critical phase of flight, yeah. it's right there. You can see it with your peripheral vision. No, is, it, you... is it numbers or lights or what? We'll have to show you the display in a minute, but it does have a couple different displays with colored lights okay. that help you catch your eye and see the different colors. And it's very intuitive to a pilot on, on how you move the controls to affect that. So when you, you also get a um, you also get a, a warning or an audible uh, call outs in your headset. Our system ties into your, um, your audio uh, panel, uh -huh. your audio panel, and then it allows you to hear different no noises when, and when warnings. you're getting close to it, or when it's gone. You can program it for different different nice. ways. It sometimes like it. can give you a it'll give you a, a tone if you're on the optimum angle of attack that's perfect for your airplane, uh -huh. and it will also give you warnings if you exceed that and start to get slow and approach a stall. That's very useful. Yep. So, uh, did you stall land the F-16? We did not stall land the F-16. What did you land the, the, the F-16? We always landed the F-16 at our optimum angle of attack, mm -hmm. which is represented by our blue donut. Same exact display that we have here at iFly AOA. Um, wow. And that optimum AOA blue donut is exactly the perfect speed for that airplane. So you really shouldn't be hearing the stall horn upon landing, Correct. right? We never landed with a stall horn. We land with optimum angle of attack, and it made for a perfect landing every so time. So what about for short field landings or soft field landings? For short or soft field landings, you can, at least in the F-16 community, we would in fact go a little bit beyond Blue Donut, but because we had the AOA system configured and installed and, and working correctly, it allows you to safely do that if you wanted to do a, a low speed or even slower airspeed landing. The advantage of the AOA system is it 
it alerts you as you approach the stall at different intervals. It tells you, hey, you're starting to get slow. Hey, you're really getting slow. Hey, now it's really bad. You need to be careful. Versus now, a traditional stall indicator just sounds when, um, you're, when you're stalling. Yes, but now you know. he doesn't fly an F-16 and you fly a... What do you have? Oh, I fly a Beechcraft Bonanza. And do you have an AOA in it? I do. I Why do it. you have an AOA in it? I have it specifically for that, that base to final turn situation that I feel is probably uh, a huge, huge safety margin. I want to have that extra safety margin. That's a good enough reason for me, especially in the back yeah. country, because yep. I don't have references like a regular runway. That's right. Or That's right. Fassy lights. You don't uh, have it's, that. It's usually runways I haven't been to. Well, and you might be high altitude too, yes. right? High density altitude or yes. low temperatures, different, different yes. changes in weight to your carbon cub. Yep. I'm sure your weight changes dramatically. Well, the AOA compensates for all of that and you just fly one AOA awesome. for, for every for every so, uh, yeah so yeah. wait a minute now if, if the industry for the last 50 or 60 years we've been teaching pilots to have the stall horn on landing now, are you saying that we shouldn't be hearing the stall horn and landing that we should be landing at Blue Donut I, I'm saying we should be landing at Blue Donut because that is the optimum AOA for your wing if it's calibrated correctly uh, and it it will be very close to stall warning but it's it's not stalling to where you're getting too slow and then and then dropping the airplane in. Uh -huh. And if you do land with the stall horn blaring, realize that you're starting to get so slow that you're gonna start to lose that airflow over the wings and you could possibly have some directional yes. issues yes. as your ailerons lose, lose effectiveness. I'm guessing in GA aircraft, the blue donut is just above the stall. That's probably about right, yep. Yeah, Depending on your... You have the most control, 30% of the 1.3 BSO. 1.3 BSO. So what are, the, what are the practical test standards from the FAA say now we have to fly all approaches at? They say 1.3 BSO. Which is? Blue donut. Thank but you. What, what about the, uh, <clears throat> the flare? Well, you're going to bleed off the little bit of airspeed, but it allows you to have the proper control authority and the proper airflow over your you're, control You're surfaces. never going to be stalling be way behind the power curve That's right. too high. And dropping Not it in. Exactly. Very good. And more importantly, though, that final turn, that base to final turn, if you're uncoordinated yeah. or you're having a, an issue with different you're, winds. You're distracted. And you're distracted. Now you yeah. look outside, you're trying to find the runway or something, yes. you get slow. You're going to get that that um, audible signal in your headset as well yeah. as the visual signal right in your line of sight that tells you hey you need to lower the nose you're getting too slow now and what happens if uh, let's say he's flying his carbon cub he's coming into camarillo even though it's a beautiful day today but sometimes it goes zero zero here and they tell him he's got to hang out and wait but he's running low on gas what what do we do one of the best things about the aoa system you can fly blue donut for a number of different applications one of them is best endurance so all of a sudden you need to hold for 30 minutes or an hour or maybe go to a divert airfield. Uh -huh. You can fly Blue Donut and that's your best endurance for your airplane and keeps you off the longest amount of time while saving fuel no until you can come up with a different game plan. Now let's say he's out there flying along and he loses an engine. Losing an engine is a different story. So Blue Donut is going to save you again with that. It's the best AOA for your aircraft. You lose your engine. The best thing you can do is again get to that best airspeed, that Blue Donut. It's the most efficient yeah. that your airplane is, is, is uh, performing. Uh -huh. So with that maximum efficiency at Blue Donut, you've lost your engine. It gives you also time uh -huh. to look around, find an airfield or a field in your yeah. case to land in, yeah. and it gives you time to, to, to do that. Now, okay. didn't you write a book? I wrote a book. I did. It's called Engine Out Survival Tactics. Thanks for the pitch, by the way. <laughs> uh, and it's for, uh, it's for general book. aviation pilots. Okay. Thank you. Uh, uh, we'll have a link on the YouTube to yeah. click here to go buy your book. And there's an EAA webinar that I gave on it as well, but uh, if you're interested in some of the military procedures and training that we do in the military and how you can apply that to your airplane in the, in the general aviation world, it'll help So you what out. you're saying is Blue Donut, once you lose that engine and then if you find a location, then go to glide speed? Then I go to glide speed. So okay. Blue Donut is my best So can best you explain endurance. the difference between glide speed and Blue Donut for the audience? Um, not without a lot of physics and charts. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Edit that out, but um, yeah, the, the best thing for Blue Donut when you lose your engine is just to have that, that most endurance. The max endurance, least amount of drag on the airplane, best most amount of lift, it will allow you to find that place. You want, you want Blue Donut, you want the empty field, and then you want his book. And That's then right. you want the book. Good. And then yeah. you go to Best Glide. Because you'll have time to read the book at Blue Donut, right? That's right. <laughs> exactly. Not for surviving after you're off, off airport. That's true. That's right. Now, what about night landings? Night landings are, are great with the AOA system. And uh, what they allow you to do is, again, using your peripheral vision with the, the indicator up in your glare shield as you're flaring, maybe even coming out into land on an airfield that's not lit very well, or maybe a backcountry strip when it's getting dark uh, late at night. 
it allows you to, to, to use that, that perfect blue donut, optimum AOA, and touch down really nicely yes. on an on a unfamiliar terrain or a dark Because you're going to have le less clues from less peripheral visual clues, clues as exactly to where right. you are, and you don't want to hit too hard, come in too fast, that's exactly so that's a right. great way to control it. That's so exactly many right. people say that we have the best Air Force in the world. <laughs> How many pilots did you train in the Air Force? I probably personally trained maybe you know 300 to, to 400 actual individual pilots in the, in the modern day U.S. Air Force. That's awesome. And one of the things that we always talk about and we get from day one on Air Force pilot training all the way up through tactical aviation in the F-16 community is angle of attack. And uh, it's something we used in the, in the tactical fighter community. It's, it's our bread and butter. It's our scalpel, as we like to say. I used angle attack in the F-16 uh, from, from turning type fights to, to low-level missions to everything all the way down to just landing, uh, landing the, uh, the fighter aircraft. So this is something he can use in his carbon cub? Absolutely. The physics are the same. The important thing for people to understand is that the physics don't change. The wing has uh, an angle of attack. It has a critical angle of attack of where it fails. Every airplane has that angle of attack, uh, that importance to that. And if you can understand how that your wing uh, is performing relative to that wind and that angle of attack, every airplane can use this tool. A lot of flight instructors say you don't need it. You know, you need to feel the plane. I've heard, I've heard that, and there's some truth to that. I would say, um, however. Uh, with the indicator and the AOA system, you're gonna see it. You're gonna maybe feel it in your pants, maybe not. Maybe you get distracted, right? So, but when you can see that and you can hear something in your headset that tells you you're getting slow and you see the red chevrons doesn't telling you, easier than it that. doesn't get any easier. So he likes to fly his carbon cub into some pretty high mountainous terrain. Is this gonna be helpful? Absolutely. High density altitudes. Yeah. I don't have to worry anymore. I just gotta look at the lights. You just look at the lights. You can fly yeah. the blue donut and you know you're gonna be safe for that altitude, that airspeed for your differing weights that you'll have in your carbon cup. All right, awesome. you got your, you got your credit card? Yeah, <laughs> let's I'm do ready, it. baby. Let's All right, buy let's it. Let's do it.